What is up, Sushi Squad? We are back again for some more Trove to Trove, and today we're going to be doing that age-old question, that beginner's guide video to the Delves. I, I finally got things kind of organized a little bit, have a much better understanding of the Delves myself, and hopefully we'll be able to present a proper video for you guys and gals. So if you would please, if you are new to Trove, you can use that sign up link in the description, and then anything you buy out of the cash shop, I'll end up making a cut, so it's an awesome way that you can support me while literally just playing the game. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. I've got it all kind of categorized here in a text document, so if you're confused about one thing, keep in mind that it may be at a later portion of the video. So uh, first and foremost, we're going to talk about what exactly are delves. Uh, delves are going to end up being an infinite generated dungeon. Uh, in short, the way that the Shadow Towers handled themselves uh, was they would end up lagging out the server a lot by constantly creating new instances every time people would end up opening new Shadow Tower portals. Uh, so Shadow Tower portals have been pretty much completely obliterated. They're technically still in the game, but delves have since replaced them. Uh, I'm talking about like everything. You're going to end up getting Titan Souls and Lunar Souls from the delves and everything like that as well, which we'll talk about the specifics of that a little bit later. Uh, so the delve is kind of the age old answer to or the age old question. Can Trove get rid of the lag? Uh, the delves has rectified that a lot because with an infinite dungeon, it means that you technically have to just go in once and then the game doesn't have to worry about constantly generating new worlds. So that's that's the intent, even though everybody's just constantly opening delve portals uh, to try and grind for the new gear. But uh, so with the infinite dungeons, uh, you know, you don't have to leave. The difficulty will increase based on your power rank, which is weird because it should actually be determined by your light value. So your light value is literally a stat that you'll pretty much only get once you start getting to the end game of trove uh you basically are only going to see it once you start getting to the geode surface which is as soon as difficulty uh u8 so once you get to u8 you can start getting crystal gear which gives you light value on top of just the normal stats of equipment uh as well as there is cosmetic or cosmic gems not cosmetic gems that are a part of the game uh, and these will also end up increasing your light value so uh there's also new banners uh including banners that you can get from leviathan boss that are found in U8, U9, and U10, which we're not trying to fully explore that. I'm just trying to let you guys know that all of the enemies are affected by a light and darkness stat in the delves. So enemies uh, will actually generate with a darkness value. Just consider this to be armor. And then the light stat that players can end up getting, consider it armor penetration. So the higher the light value that you have, the more damage you end up doing in the delves, which is pretty ridiculous because if I literally load into a public delve right now, I will more than likely, because there's going to be other people around my power rank at 35 KPR, we are more than likely going to be thrown to depth 140, 150, and we'll talk about the floors a little bit later in the video, and essentially we won't be able to do it because it doesn't matter what our power rank is, the light value is the important thing. And, and that's kind of the thing that is both a good thing and a bad thing about the delves because the entirety of trove bases everything off of your power rank even though for right now with the delves it actually throws all of that try hard power rank to the side in the favor of just having more light value and that kind of being more important than having like max damage and stuff which obviously still makes a difference but anyways uh so in order to end up doing damage to certain enemies in the deeper depths uh you're going to have to have maybe around four to five k uh light in order to do damage to enemies within uh u10 difficulty of delves uh so we'll talk about the floor depths and stuff like that a little bit later but i'm just kind of giving you guys a ballpark light value that you want to have when you're kind of at the later portion of the game uh it, basically if you actually do damage in normal u10 geode surface you should be fine in the delves for a couple floors floors so you will have to have four to five k light value in order to actually do damage uh, and then around seven k light value or something like that if you want to actually be soloing depending on the classes that you're taking which i already have a, another video that shows all of the best classes that you can end up using in the delves so as you go into the delves, there is also going to end up being different objectives. Uh, there's also a whole bunch of different banners that you can end up crafting, different allies and stuff like that, which we will kind of just graze upon those today because today it's talking about the delves rather than talking about uh, every single item like this. It's just important to mention that while you're in the delves, you will literally be getting tons of these banners just as drops. And you might want to take a look at this crafting table to see if there's any of the banners that you want to craft. And so you can hang on 
into the banners that are appropriate in order to end up forging into that item because unfortunately this game is going like the delves are literally going to fill up your inventory if you're a free-to-play player and you only have one inventory tab let me tell you you're going to be leaving the delves very often because of these stupid banners uh there's also going to be inert geode which is a new currency that you will get for completing delves and opening uh delves chests and stuff like that uh, basically you're going to end up using these as a new form of currency to craft all the new mounts and wings and stuff like that which we'll get into these in a little bit but you'll also use it as a resource uh, to craft a lot of the items that are in this table right here now in order to end up increasing the amount of inert geo that you can carry there is a couple different wallets because otherwise the inventory item itself uh, is quite literally going to end up being limited based on the amount of wallets that you have so there's three different wallets that you can end up getting in the game that'll increase it by I forget whether it increases it by per. I think it's like 250 each time you get a wallet or something with your default uh, inert geode size being like 600 or I'm not exactly sure on the numbers because I didn't mention it in the patch notes. Uh, but anyways, this guy's going to sell you one that you can buy very easily. There's going to be one in the cash shop uh, that'll be in the new section as of the time that I'm recording this video anyways. Uh, and you'll buy this with credits. So free to play players do have the opportunity of buying this. And then finally, but not last but not least, there is the last wallet right here, the last third upgrade grade and this will actually cost a coin of obsidian delver which the coin of obsidian delver for those of you asking because i know a lot of you guys have been asking is in the delves badge for completing 500 delve challenges okay that's the only way that you can end up getting the maxed out wallet and thus you can end up buying kind of the last few items uh from the uh, you know from within the delves and stuff some of the merchants end up selling some stuff so anyways now that we've kind of covered all of that uh oh i guess i should also mention the new allies uh these allies down here especially literally replace all of the previously best allies in the game because there is just straight up like just as an example puck right here literally replaces chronomancer cubesley because it does the exact same stats and the same passive at, you know even increasing or decreasing your cooldown reduction but on top of that it gives you 300 light now the thing is when you go into the delves and i'll hop into a private delves in a moment so i can show you guys a good example uh when you're in the delves each of the delve caves are going to generate with a different biome type right a lot of them are going to be random except if you're in challenge delves which we'll talk about those later because those are kind of the more intense ones that most people are going to end up being farming uh but each of the different enemy types within the delves does have a rare chance of dropping all of these allies so keep that in mind it's really uh, it's really interesting and cool uh so i think we can actually hop into some delves right now i'm not going to hop into a public one unfortunately just because i could be waiting here all day uh, i guess i should mention how the queuing works though so literally for the public delves and for private and challenges but it doesn't matter too too much you will actually press e on this to queue up you see this light on top of me means that i'm ready in the queue but more importantly you can look at this little icon here in the top left underneath my level because if i actually leave this world the green video effects on top of my character is going to go away but i will actually still remain within the queue uh weird that it actually just disappeared right there but i i would still remain within the queue even while i'm out doing adventuring and stuff like that which is a bit risky I, I wouldn't recommend that you do that because you could literally be doing some dungeons and then suddenly it's like oh hey there's a crystal drop and then it doesn't matter because you just get randomly pulled into the queue <laughs> so you gotta really watch out for that right uh so as we end up going into the delves right here let, uh, let me get myself a private portal set up I'd also like to mention that the private portal and the challenge portals, you can actually craft all of those at that hub uh, crafting table that I mentioned. There is going to be two different challenge portals, which again, we'll talk about those in a minute. So the difference being between public, private and challenge delves is that in public delves, you'll be able, uh, whatever class you go into the delves with, you're going to be stuck with. Uh, again, it's going to take your power rank into account. So even though you can't swap your classes, like you can't say, for example, be on a weaker class open the portal go inside and then swap to a stronger class but you can kind of cheese it by unequipping all of your gear and then equipping it back when you go in because it's going to lower your power rank so it'll lower the difficulty at which you end up entering the delve right you'll be able to use your mounts and what have you but as soon as you end up getting to the private and challenge delves you know that npc that or the merchant i should say that was selling a, a bunch of elephant mounts and wings and stuff like that those mounts and wings and stuff can only be used in private and challenge delves so 
if you go into a private and challenge delve you, you better hope that you have a good normal default movement speed because otherwise you're going to be paying for it with incredibly slow walking speed uh, this is where some of the modules from the geode caving can come into play you can use path painter etc uh, check out my other tutorials talking about the geode caving but generally speaking i probably it's probably due that i make an updated video on all of that because they've actually changed it quite a bit so anyways here's a prime example of throwing down a private delve portal defaulting at depth 121 or uh if i end up swapping to like a less power rank character and then i throw down the same portal it's going to be at depth 88. so that's kind of the same trick that i was just mentioning previously but the whole thing is that with a private delve uh, if i actually just force this you, you know other people could end up queuing and then the host who places down the portal can end up just forcing it uh, so that everybody gets thrown into the delve but the interesting thing about a private delve and even challenge delves is because they're hosted by a player you can actually just swap to whatever classes you want Challenge delves are going to be a little bit different. Private ones will end up just operating kind of same as the pu uh, public ones where you're going to end up having a set uh, depth based on your power rank. And then the challenge delves on the other hand are going to kind of be set in stone. So they're kind of more like challengey, like all generated the same and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, so let's get into the delve itself. So there's a whole bunch of things here that you got to take into account. I, I'm just realizing that this video is going to be a bit longer than I was hoping for, but it's kind of a big in-depth one. Yeah, cover all the bases, right? Maybe I'll make a shorter one that just kind of covers the surface of all of it. But uh, this right here is going to be your fast travel uh, location. So anytime you end up going into a room, uh, rooms are kind of just a big chunk. You'll you'll get used to it. Uh, most of all, you can use the enemy types. Uh, usually you'll go into a room. It'll be all one enemy type. And then as soon as you get to the next room, it'll all be a different enemy type. Once you end up killing all of the enemies in a specific room, you will actually unlock that room's fast travel point. So at the top here, you can see this compass is actually a little bit different than usual. Uh, the northeast, all that junk, that doesn't actually matter anymore. It is literally from left to right is how deep you are within the rooms. So that if you get lost for whatever reason and start accidentally going backwards, you're going to start seeing your character model or your head at, rather going backwards through the depths so that you can kind of keep track of you know going deeper and so on and so forth now a couple things to note is that you yourself on the compass are always going to be the biggest head you're going to have green hair uh blue hair sorry green hair is going to end up being all the other players and their icons are going to be a lot smaller uh for some weird reason the boss room here uh if somebody actually goes into this boss room the boss icon will actually overlay on top of their head icon so it's difficult to tell if somebody's actually in the boss room because it won't actually show it for some weird reason. But uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that as you end up clearing out these rooms and unlocking those fast travel points that I mentioned, uh, the color of each of these squares will actually light up. So you could literally skip through the entire thing only to feed all the enemies in the last room. And then players could use this to teleport to the last room. Generally speaking, though, everyone's going to be doing everything that they can to pitch in. Now, these trophies right here, the enemy trophies are going to be representative of the enemies that you're going to end up fighting. And as you end up getting to more and more difficult delves, which is literally going to be determined by the depth, uh, you're going to end up seeing various enemy buffs like these by these specific trophies. So if you see these buffs right up here, it means that these actually apply to all things uh, that are in the current delve. So when slain, enemies have a chance of refilling a single flash charge for all players within three blocks. Uh, and then this one, Trovian attacks, heal them uh, for percentage of their maximum health. Okay, so that's actually just giving us a little life steal. So maybe these are player buffs and then these are enemy uh, buffs. I'm not entirely sure on that just based on the location. But one of the things that you'll instantly notice is uh, as you go in here, there's going to be a whole bunch of the normal geode resources. But we also happen to see uh, Cinnabar because this is a Forbidden Spires themed uh, delve. So that's actually based off of the U6 difficulty world. But it's a really easy way that you could even just go in here uh, and start grabbing some of the delve resources because because if you actually uh, tab out into what would normally bring you to your building inventory, you'll notice that you're actually in your geode caving uh, inventory. So you're literally going to end up being able to use your laser, no matter what uh, level that is based on the module. Uh, you can end up using your barrier, the new vacuum module, uh, you know, various things that you had from the geode caves. Oddly enough as well, your jet boots, which is kind of annoying, and you can end up having your grappling hook and so on right there's only a couple reasons why you want to actually do that so anyways 
as we were in this room, uh, they'd only generated with one enemy. So as we killed that enemy, this right here being all lit up is showing that this is the fast travel point that I mentioned. Uh, and you can just barely see behind my gigantic head that this room is cleared because it's uh, got a bright blue on the icon. So on top of all of that, uh, there is going to end up being the base objective. You have to complete whatever the objective is within the given amount of time, whether it be killing random creatures, uh, killing all creatures in like clearing rooms sometimes. Uh, another one will be killing monolith enemies. So for monolith enemies, you literally will just rush past everything. And then sometimes you'll end up seeing this cursed skull like thing just standing here. Imagine just use me as a representing example of it, right? And it'll have a big glowing stream of light sticking right out of it. So you have to press E to activate it. You can't just attack it the same as normal cursed skulls, but you'll activate it. And then you basically have to fight all of the enemies that it spawns. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the way that the delves actually generates enemies is kind of stupid. So if I activate, uh, let's say for example, right here, if I activated a module or a monolith, I mean, uh, some of the enemies that I would have to clear might be down a couple floors and some of them might've actually generated up here backwards. So the best way that you can end up telling if you've killed all the enemies within a monolith is again, seeing whether or not the whole room is lit up. Because if the room is lit up, it means the objective is done. And usually you can tell where a monolith is because the rooms will be empty outside of the monolith itself like they won't end up having any of these random enemies uh encounters and stuff like that uh the other thing too that might not make that much sense to you guys but as far as the monolith objective is concerned it's always going to be one two space one so what i literally mean by that is right here the fourth square this would end up being where a monolith is located then you can skip two and then there's another monolith skip to another monolith skip to and then another monolith just before the boss room uh, it's consistent like this every single time so if you end up getting monolith you can just skip straight to the fourth room and then just go to every third room after that uh, to end up completing the objective so as you'll notice, there is also another objective to reach the cursed skulls. So this is where I, we're actually running out of time here. So I'm gonna try and uh, speed through this, but I don't know if we're going to end up making it exactly because we still gotta kill one more creature uh, and reach the skull within like 40 seconds. So I'm just gonna kind of move it here. Uh, as you end up completing the first objective, you see that it's actually grayed out now, but reaching cursed skulls is still going to end up being the other objective, which is literally just getting to the boss room. Uh, the more people you end up having in your delve, you can have up to eight, uh, the more people you'll actually have to have reach the boss room. So we would have to have two people reach the boss room if we had a full group. This is where in my tier list of, you know, the classes that you use in Delves, unfortunately, most physical based characters just don't quite do it anymore. Uh, you're pretty much going to be sticking to magic characters to do damage on top of the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to have a higher light value. So what I would recommend is if you have a full group and if you have like, say, Neon Ninja, Dino Tamer, some of the faster classes in the game, I'd recommend that those guys just rush to the end so that this objective is done by the time you end up killing all the enemies or what have you, right? Because as you end up completing both objectives, any players that are still earlier on in the Delve floors or in the Delve depths, I should say, will uh, literally have a prompt appear in the middle of their screen that says, do you want to warp to the boss room? Yes or no? Click yes, it teleports you here so that everybody can end up completing the objective together. Bada bing, bada boom, we kill this thing. And as soon as this guy is killed, that actually gives credit to your character that you have completed this floor. And then you would then go to the deeper floor. So uh, you can see right here, we got a pressurized chest and every third depth, I know that this doesn't make sense. I'm talking about floors and depths as if they're different things, but you know, the depth itself is literally going to be represented by some numbers right here. You see, we came in here at depth 88. We are now going to depth 99 or 89. Uh, there is this portal right here that you can end up using to opening the next exit so that you can go to the next objective. It's worth pointing out that more people standing by this thing and activating it will actually make the portal spawn faster because countless times people will go activate it and then they just start screwing around doing their own thing maybe they go to the loot collector or whatever thinking that the portal is actually generating but it generates extremely slow unless all players are basically just standing inside it
but as you noticed as soon as this portal ended up generating now the next objective is on so we warp in here and now we're in the next floor and you can see that we actually had some uh, different buffs generating for these specific enemies we also have a different biome which is the underwater kind of sea biome right and usually these enemies are going to end up being pretty easy uh, depending on the biome type as well as the buffs to the enemies you can get some really bad rng with it sometimes they'll generate like way too powerful or what have you but uh the important thing is that for every third depth that you end up traveling you'll actually end up having a shadow vault show up so a shadow vault is literally going to be a shadow tower chest right since as i mentioned previously shadow tower stuff has been moved over to the delves so shadow tower chests are now going to end up being in the delves and that's going to end up being every third depth from your starting floor it doesn't matter what the number is well it kind of does but it, it most of all matters what the starting number is and then every third floor or third depth whatever is, is going to end up giving you that shadow vault now here's the thing because i know that a lot of you guys have been asking about titan souls and lunar souls i'll probably have another video that just specifically focuses on titan and souls and lunar souls because it's just something that so many people talk about but uh in those shadow vaults you will literally end up getting titan souls and lunar souls so the way that it works is the titan souls and lunar souls uh you may or may not have noticed that the welcome screen uh has actually changed so that monday is now delve day instead of shadow tower day and on top of that there is no bonus effect that is affecting titan souls or lunar souls the reason for that is because the buff that would normally affect uh, both free-to-play players and patron players has actually just been spread across the board, board to every day of the week. So you don't have to do delves on Monday in order to get all of your Titan and Lunar Souls, which is a godsend because it means that you can literally wait until the end of the week and then you can end up getting your Shadow Towers or your delves, in this case, done for that week you can wait till the weekend you don't have to rush it on monday you know well most people are like usually busy going back to work or what have you uh well during this time who knows but i'm just trying to say uh, and on top of that they've actually given the patron bonus amount of uh, titan and lunar souls to everybody across the board as well so if you're a free-to-play player you'll notice that you're actually getting more titan souls and more lunar souls and more despoil more despoiled divinity i think you get more despoiled divinity as well right uh so anyways the way that that ends up working is for every vault that you end up destroying that counts as one for your entire week okay so it's a progress uh, a progress bar where you can open six shadow vaults in total for the entire week to get titan souls and lunar souls okay so if we end up getting to the shadow vault right now and then i leave the delve and i open another one and then i get to another shadow vault that is going to still count as the second shadow vault that i did for that week so you literally don't even have to do all of your shadow towers or your delves all in one sitting you can just do them one at a time periodically throughout the week until you end up finally getting your lunar souls which is always going to end up being from the sixth count it the sixth shadow vault that you end up opening okay now in order to open shadow vaults in the first place you're going to end up using these new delve shadow keys which uh you can actually literally get these uh, it says you can use these to open shadowy soul vaults uh sometimes found after defeating delve bosses they can also be used in shadow towers for lesser rewards shadow towers are still technically here but ignore them they're not really here uh we'll have an hour video talking about that but uh, as far as i know you can get uh fragments for these keys or even just the keys in general from adventure worlds i think i'm not 100 percent sure on it i just know that i've slowly been losing out on these delve keys uh and as this update is live on pc and when it comes live on consoles you literally will be able to convert all of your shadow tower keys into the delve keys because they are having this basically replace shadow towers right so anyways with all of that finally out of the way i think that we can move on to challenge delves because challenge delves are a little bit more picky uh and ultimately is going to be what you're doing to end up getting the loot so we'll be talking about uh you know crystal four mementos and stuff like that uh but let me get things a little bit more prepared Oh, I also wanted to mention that uh, shadow uh, shadow shards as well as shadow cash, which is normally dropped from shadow towers as well. Those are all in the delves now as well. Once you end up getting to certain depth numbers and stuff like that. So uh, the way that the depth works is again, as you go deeper, it is going to increase in difficulty at depth 115 
very specific depth 115 is when you're going to end up getting to u10 difficulty now this is one of two requirements in order to end up getting crystal four gear the second requirement is that you can only get crystal four gear from the shadow vaults this is where the challenge delves come in because they are very consistent so challenge delves are going to end up being something wholly different than publics and privates uh, the way that they're going to end up working is there is going to be two different portals you can craft one is an easy delve portal or, or easy challenge portal and then one of them is just a normal one uh i just i just call this one normal even though the game doesn't refer to it as that it just makes more sense to me to call it that and basically the way that these are going to work is the easy portal no matter what whether you're super duper weak super duper strong no matter how deep you've gotten into the delves none of that matters the easy portal is always going to throw you at depth 110 okay so that is their purpose they are literally going to end up being a way that you can start at 110 and slowly get deeper and then maybe it gets too difficult so you can leave and then you can start at 110 again okay that's one of the methods that you can end up using it for whereas the normal delve challenge portal what these are going to do is literally throw you into the deepest depth the deepest floor that you have gone so if I, for whatever reason, I'm going through the challenge delves and I get to floor 130, if I want to continue that progress, I'll end up using one of these normal challenge portals. Now, the thing is that every week on the weekly reset, which is Monday, uh, right now it's at 4 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which is my time zone. So on the weekly reset, the delves will actually throw your challenge portal up eight floors. So that's negative eight floors because the deeper you go the higher the numbers are going to end up being so if you end up getting to depth 118 after the weekly reset the deepest floor that the game is going to consider you in is just 110 again you're going to start backwards eight floors this is a nice incentive so that players keep trying to go for the deepest score because the deeper you end up getting depending on uh, you know how deep you can end up getting into the delves basically you'll end up earning a place on the leaderboard and that is the new method of actually gaining a purple name so it's pretty cool obviously you still gotta have like your super try hard group which i don't i pretty much just do this solo myself or with like a couple other people but anyways with all of that there's gonna be a couple other things that we gotta end up talking about here but not too much we're actually almost done so mementos uh is another thing lots of people ask about i honestly will probably just have a very short video talking about mementos as, in general as well but mementos are literally going to be an item you'll see in your inventory that's going to be based off of whatever boss you ended up killing they're just a rare drop you literally consume this item and it's going to end up giving you mastery uh that the mementos will actually show up in one of these sections i think it's yeah right here so there is a lot of mementos that you can end up getting like geez louise and they are just completely random so good luck getting them there's biome specific ones boss specific ones creature specific ones uh if you've already got them uh memento you literally will just loot collect it and it'll end up giving you some of the pressure caches so the pressure caches are going to be another resource that you can get out of the delve boxes uh those can end up dropping some of the better banners in the game honestly i'd recommend that you just open pressure caches because they're extremely easy to get instead of even bothering crafting any of these banners because they're just way better like the one that i'm rocking right now literally gives me more inert geode for defeating enemies which again is that currency that i mentioned that you'll use to buy various things from this merchant uh sometimes you can go into the delves and you'll end up having a merchant randomly spawn that'll sell you recipes allies uh or even just more of the pressure caches that i mentioned previously that give you this right here so this is going to end up being one of those pressure locked caches that i was talking about that you open and it gives you various items uh the tracker potion i guess i should mention this as well as the bombs that i i don't really use that's why i forgot to talk about them until later in this video tracker potions are going to be the same as the shadow hunter's passive ability shadow mark where it will basically show enemies through walls it doesn't give them a, a, a debuff or anything uh it technically counts as a debuff but what i mean is with the shadow hunter in in his case it actually makes his attacks do more damage uh but these are just so that you can track enemies through walls there's actually a rare banner you can get from the boxes that will have all enemies lit up within an area around you and the cool thing is that because it acts as a debuff like i mentioned 
all of the players within that delve will actually have the benefit and they'll all be able to see enemies through walls which can be really really helpful if you have to like clear all enemies in a room because sometimes those pesky critters will be hiding out in a little corner and it's just you got to check every single corner until you make sure that the objective is done right so on top of all of that uh there's gonna be a couple of different food items so there's gonna be cave milk uh which will end up getting randomly uh there's the electric crystals uh and then there's going to be the cave kelp you can kind of forge most of these uh right here so you kind of can forge into each of these but the free range electrolyte that is something that you kind of get from the pressurized boxes uh the reason it's important is you use it to literally craft like some of the more important allies that you can end up using and stuff like that there's also going to be these recipes for decorative banners that you can throw down in your club worlds which I don't know. I mean, they're kind of cool. Uh, there's also going to end up being some of these quest dudes. So you can complete one of these quests per day. Sometimes you'll see this guy inside the delves and they will actually end up generating with different quests. Like this one's just donating inert geode, uh, which we can literally do this right here. Boop. Uh, and then at some other floors, you could potentially end up running into uh, one of the other objectives, right? Anyways, cool stuff there. Uh, I think that covers pretty much everything. So hopefully you found this video helpful, guys. Uh, if there is anything that I missed, I'm just double checking my list here. If there's anything that I missed, uh, you guys can end up leaving it down in the comments as well. Ask a question. Usually, you know, we got a pretty good community, so people will end up answering. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, one of the other things, too, that's a big difference between publics, privates, and challenges is that in public portals, obviously, you can't invite people. Uh, pri private ones, you can invite anybody as far as i know i haven't really done that many private portals though and with challenge portals you can only invite back people that ended up entering the portal in the first place okay okay i think that covers it thanks for watching smash like sub for more buy some of the merch you want to support the channel and have yourselves a fantastic day get delvin gamers sign on and stay epic